That's no more. That's an asshole. It wasn't a phase. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Senior Citizen Podcast. And we are here with Dylan and Koa from Young Fiction. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having us. How are you guys doing today? Tired. Long drive Feels. for us. So, Where are you guys from? We're from uh, Palm Beach Gardens. Yee. So it was a nice little hour and a half. Thank you guys for coming out. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed Thanks the mini road trip. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On a it Sunday. Was good for like South Florida traffic. Right? No problems or anything like that, which we were... We always kind of anticipate, but today was nice. We got very fortunate. We'll see how the drive home is. So usually when I'm coming straight here from my house, there's this one part on Turnpike mixing in with 95, Mm -hmm. I think. There's always traffic. There has not been one time that I go onto that, you know, merge that it's not traffic. There's no traffic today. I was like, what's going on? There you go. (laughs) Am I still in South Florida? (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, like for south of right where we live, traffic becomes abysmal for 40 miles. It's just everyone loses their knowledge on how to drive south of us it's so weird right without yeah. fail no it feels i'm i'm one of those like <laughs> what was the turn signal no yeah. yeah it's i get in the car with my mom and she's like you're driving really aggressive but i'm like you don't know where we are um but anyways tell me a little bit about young fiction you guys are the founding members from what yes. i understand yep. how did the band get started you know well that was back we we've been playing music together since we were 11 years old we're 24 now wow and uh in growing up it was just always playing in bands together but those bands just kept falling apart falling apart and i think i was still 18 when me and dylan were together and i was like hey man it's you and me like this is what it's gonna be we made a pact and then a month later he called me and he's like dude i got in touch with the studio we're gonna go make an album so our first album headspace was just the two of us we hired a studio drummer because we need someone to play the songs but we wrote the whole album financed it ourselves when we were 19 years old and that was really Having that album was like, okay, now we have something to show for. So it's like sending out the record or even just the demos when it was like, hey, we're banned. We want to be on your show. What do you think? You know, which I feel like is a little different from now with newer bands who like, if you're cool and you're nice, you can get on the show. Whereas people wouldn't give us the time of day back then. (laughs) Dude, it was so rough when we first started. It was, it was. Nobody wanted to give us a chance. I think we played like, what, three or four shows our first year. Oh, wow. I don't think it was that much, like, the first, like, 12 months. I don't think we played that much. It was more than that. It, it was it was more than that. I just think but it was few and far between. We didn't play as many as we play now. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, but that was, like, 20, that was late 2018 that we founded this this actual group with this name. Right. Yeah. No, but, like, outside of that, like, holy shit, friend goals. Like, I don't, <laughs> I've never had a friend that long. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that seems weird. You seem nice. <laughs> It's prob- happens. It's probably them. Either. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gaslighting my old friends? Like, <laughs> no, I mean, stuff happens. Sometimes life happens sure. or, you know, it's not necessarily a falling out, but it's very hard to like move through so many stages of your life with certain people. Sure. Like, so that's very cool. I like that you guys Thank like, you. you know, were able to stay friends and then make awesome music. Yeah. Together. I mean, I consider him part of my family at this point. He's like a brother. So it's, yeah. it's very like. Even if the band falls apart, which I don't see it doing, me and Koa are always going to be close, I feel like. I mean, so the other members, do they feel like they're third wheeling? <laughs> no, no. I mean, honestly, with the other guys, it's like they're friends too. Like they're family as well. Like we all know each other's families. We go on trips together. We spend holidays together, everything like that. Our bass player, Tony, actually, we met because we went. he and I went to, me and Dylan, went to go record at this studio where Tony was interning. We became friends. Okay. And a year later... I was like, hey, dude, I want you to join the band. And he's the bass player now. I was the bass player. But I was like, I like you so much, I'll go over to guitar, dude. Take my job. And uh, we love him. He didn't even play bass when we asked him to do that either. He no, joined I, He joined the band without knowing how to play bass guitar. So What? <laughs> yeah. I taught him my songs. <laughs> and uh, he played a little guitar, but not enough to be like the guitarist for a band. You right. You know what I mean? Well, that being said, he played more guitar than I did at the time. Yeah, true. So I had to teach myself <laughs> on top of teaching him. And then our current drummer, Gavin... We knew from a previous drummer of the band. Okay. He and he had already been coming out to shows, so we've been around him a little bit. And when we were trying him out as the drummer, I didn't want any new members of the band. I was like, me, Dylan, and now Tony will be the band. Drummer will be the drummer for the band. But he came like in, a touring drummer. Pretty much. Essentially, yeah. 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 I just I was like, I'm happy with how we are. I'm happy with our dynamic. We don't need anybody else. He came to practice in the first song, and I was like, this guy's gonna be in the band. <laughs> 
<laughs> I knew. I was like, this guy's going to be in the band. That's yeah. so cool. The other cool thing about the band is that there's a there's a really big age discrepancy between our youngest and oldest member because Gavin is 19 mm-hmm. and Tony is 26. 26, and then we're like 24. Yeah, so there's a big jump between him and even us and Gavin is a big jump, but Gavin and Tony is another like uh, six seven year jump. So we have like it's it's weird how close we are for how different a life experience the four of us have had. Right. And I think it helps the band in general get different perspectives on music because mm-hmm. 19 year olds right now are like Zoomers, Gen Z. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they're probably like Manning. Oh, wow. This sounds like really like elitist, but like you're probably, you know, they know how to use TikTok a little better and that yeah. kind of stuff. So it helps the band get out there while, you know, Tony's on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and they also have like really good um, music taste, like versatility as opposed to like our generation, like Tony's generation. We do fine, but like, Kids now, like, it's way more normal to listen to, like, rap and metal and, like, pop and And Linkin Park and, and Falling in Reverse is thriving from that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, like, when, when, when I was, like, in middle school, it was, like, you chose. It was, like, you either listen to rock or you listen to rap or, like, country or whatever. Now it's, like, no one cares anymore. As long right. as it sounds good. And it's, like, isn't that the better way to be? Even, it doesn't even have to sound good. People just like anything. <laughs> like, people as long like, as you take something from it, it's, like. Everyone has fans. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I relate to that. That's why I like the new generations. Because I listen to, like rock music mm-hmm. subgenres and rock sometimes metal sometimes post hardcore yeah. i love pop punk but at the same yeah. time i listen to so much latin music yeah. so my spotify has to divide in in two yeah i don't know if you guys did the the flow analytic thing that came up if you use spotify i do i don't i don't think i use the flow analytic it, it came up it's like a, a fun little quiz thing for you to take oh, okay and i did it and it's like you're a moto mommy or something like that <laughs> and i'm like thanks did you ignore like my other three playlists yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they just they focus in on just the um, just the Latin music. Yeah, like it That's was funny. like th- it's probably like a Spotify initiative to like market it more for them yeah. or something. Whatever. <laughs> There's underlying meaning to it. I everything. use Apple Music, so I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> How could you? Cool. Yeah. I had an iPhone. I did. I, it was years ago. <laughs> I have an iPhone too. I was just. I, I He's was stuck in his ways. He's yeah. stuck in his ways. I did. T- I could tell from the elder emo hoodie you were wearing before that you're a big like. I assume 2000s metal, post hardcore, um, pop punk. No, I was really very, and I, you guys are gonna have to talk about your music taste too. But I was very much a scene kid. Yeah. Okay. Um, I loved like cringe. This is the first time I'm saying this on here, but uh-huh. I was like ten. No, no, I wasn't ten. I was like thirteen. I was like, I don't, loved, don't go younger and make. It I less loved Blood on the Dance Floor. Oh, really? <laughs> we were just talking about how terrible they are. I went oh back, gosh. and mind you, mind you, there are things that I've like gone back and listened to, and I was like, this is actually really like lit, like, but. Blood on the Dance Floor was one of those things that I went back and I was like, this is so bad. <laughs> I had a moment like that the other day. Really? Actually. Yeah, yeah. I, there was, <laughs> Blood it, on the Dance Floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. That's not what I thought you were going to say. I went back <laughs> and I, I don't know if I want to name like the band of the No, artist. you have to. I, okay. s- I said mine. That was my big revelation. So <laughs> I used to be like into this band called Mushroom Head when I was in high school. <laughs> okay. And I still like some of their songs. I don't listen to them. I, and I haven't for years. But the other day, I went and listened to their song QWERTY. Like Q W E R. Yeah, like the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I listened to it. I'm like, this song kind of (laughs) sucks. And but it's this crazy thing because I remember being a kid and being like, this song's awesome. I like the masks and everything. And maybe it was the spectacle that I really enjoyed looking back on it. But they have other good songs. That one just doesn't hit like it used to for me. I was gonna say, was that what it like? Did you like their music or did you just think they were hot? Blood on the dance floor. No, I did not think they were hot. I don't think anybody in their right mind thought. Dobby Vanity was hot. I was like, checking your mental state when no. I asked that question. I was like, no, I think it was just the fact that, like, oh my god, this music's so edgy and sure. for There's someone some to listen out there to right now who were like, oh my god, I thought they were hot. Yeah, <laughs> I still think they're hot. What are no. these people talking Mm-mm. about? No, yeah, d- get checked. Um, <laughs> oh my god. If we're being fair, I'll just say that my cringe band that I was listening to a lot in like middle school was like Hollywood Undead. So you know, like, kind of white boy rap rock. But yeah. I also like the mass and the whole like character thing they were doing with that i genuinely but, think that those bands have some sort of redeeming qualities but mm-hmm. blood on a dance floor just doesn't I, don't think <laughs> 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 I can't name one redeeming quality but no like i went back and i listened the band that i listened to that i was like oh shit they're actually like really good was black Bill brides mm. like yeah i remember their third album being like actually a pretty good rock record like it, it i don't remember what their third album was it was the one with in the end the, it was, was might have i might have fallen off the like wretched right before and that. divine yeah I yeah i, I fell that. off before that Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That was around the age where I was, like, starting to get into them. Okay, fair I enough. I found, like, Knives and Pens, and then that album had just come out. Was Knives and Pens your gateway, or were you already, like, into rock music? It, so I was kind of already into rock. Like, growing up, my parents were into, like, Kiss and Def Leppard and stuff like that, so right. rock and roll was, like, a cool thing to me. Mm-hmm. They were, like, superheroes. 
And then on my own, I kind of found like Ozzy Osbourne or Marilyn Manson or Korn. And then through Dylan, because he had more of like that, the pop punk tendencies when it came to what he liked to listen to. He showed me My Chemical Romance and Blink-182. And then I found like Escape the Fate and Blackville Brides and just fell down the That's rabbit hole. That's my shit. Yeah. And <laughs> somehow found my way to like starting at like My Chem, Escape the Fate, Blackville Brides. Over time, finding stuff like all the way to black metal stuff like Emperor or something like that. You okay. Know? I was I always stayed way more lighter than he did with music. Okay. My first two records I ever had was like Simple Plans, really big one, I think 2003 maybe. Uh, and then like the first record I went and bought myself was uh, my cousin showed me A Fever You Can't Sweat Out by Panic at the Disco. That's their best album. Yeah, and I, I, I think like I stayed at his house and then like when I got back from the weekend, I like made my mom take me to go buy the CD. And I like wore out the CD player listening to that album, which is so funny because like for a... Uh, Eight year old, nine year old at the time. I've like, I've still almost have no idea what he's saying on that album half the time. <laughs> like, so much of it is so intricate. But. So my experience with that was with the uh, lying is the most fun a girl can have yeah. without taking her clothes off. That they used to play the video on MTV yeah. when MTV used to play with videos the fish. with the fish. Yeah, exactly. It lives rent free. Yeah. It's there. So <laughs> I still don't really get that music video. I get. I think it's a, a body count metaphor, but I don't really know. Yeah, maybe that's. I, that's that might what be it. I, I haven't rewatched it in a very long time. I just remember like the fish heads, yeah. but the lyrics themselves, it's like, what the fuck was I doing <laughs> listening to this? Like yeah. I was not old enough. Even now I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> like on so many of those songs, they're so like, like weirdly religious or some of them are about like books, the guitarist read. So just like it, album is confusing, but it is, there is their best. I love that album. Yeah. No, I, I think, and I'm sorry for any panic fans, but that's like the only album that matters to me by them. You're not a pretty. A lot of people like pretty odd as a follow up. No, okay. don't love it. No, fair enough. Don't love it. I don't either. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's it's whatever. I yeah. give a take. I can live without it. Yeah. But like, a fever you can't sweat out was one of those iconic albums. Like, yeah, it's a staple. It marked of the Two thousand. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It was crazy that run that bands were on in that time. Like. From Under the Cork Tree and Infinity on High from Fall Out Boy, coming out in the middle of Black Parade and Three Cheers from MCR and Fever You Can't Sweat Out and Riot and Brand New Eyes from Paramore. Like, that was a crazy like three or four year run where bands were just like they defining were rock music. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was and then as far as Paramore, well, Paramore never really left, but like mm. Fall Out Boys come back too with uh, Love on the Other Side. What's the album name? So much for so Stardust. much for Stardust. Yeah, I haven't even listened to it yet, but it's I so I like the single. Good. I like the single that came from it. The, the whole album. Yeah. is like it's worth it. I have to listen to it. Uh, and Paramore's new album, This Is Why. This Is Why. Yes. Is that? Oh, they call it's it. It's called that? This Is Why. Yes. I think I only listened to the title track. Which I liked. Is I liked. This is why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I liked After Laughter a lot. So I'm I'm open to listening to Paramore's new stuff. But I fell off Paramore after Brand New Eyes. I was like, I love this, and then I just didn't listen to them aside from like the tracks that got really commercial like yeah. isn't fun ain't it fun and uh still into you and all yeah, that but great songs yeah no amazing but i just never like sat down and said okay i'm gonna listen to the new paramore album and that, then that album is actually really good for how many songs are on it the self-titled one with uh oh, yeah. with the songs on it because it ends on future which is like i think their best song it's oh. really really like if you don't know that one i would listen to the future by paramore it's crazy good Oh, After Laughter was like Rose Colored Boy and stuff like that. Yeah. I had to like study <laughs> Paramore because <laughs> <laughs> I, I went them. to the concert. <laughs> the one that just happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, meant, I wanted to go to that. I didn't end up Worth it. 10 out of 10. It. Yeah. She's incredible. She's like one of the best performers. I've seen her before. She's insane. I did too. Monumentor, 2014. I was there. I'm surprised she was so, she is so young because yeah. they've been around for so long. And then I, I looked into it recently and she's like in her early 30s, right? Yeah. I don't even think she's 35 yet. And no. she's just been doing it consistently. So there was a crazy thing. I don't know how true the story is, but there's a story that like she got grounded and couldn't go on tour. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, because she was like a teenager and her parents were like, no, you're not going. I, I, wow. I really, I, if I'm not mistaken, she was 16 years old when Misery Business's vocals were recorded. Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's insane. You know, sometimes I think, like, man, I love Paramore. And then I, I hear stuff like this. I'm like, am I even a real fan? <laughs> Bro, I felt the same way. teaching me. I felt the same way <laughs> at that concert. Mm -hmm. I had to study the set list. And when I was walking out, this one girl was like, oh, I love that. But I feel like she just kind of, like, played whatever she wanted. Like, because it had no, like, ongoing theme. Like, we went from, like, decode to, like, rose-colored boy. And it was like, it was I think it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I don't care. I feel like I was in the car with her. And she yeah. was, like, showing me songs. Like, hey, listen to this yeah, one Yeah, she was now. just having like, fun. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And then I was like, but I knew what I was getting. I looked up the set list and she's like, how could you? And I was like, <laughs> so they like I always look up the set like list. That. They played uh, everything, like and something from every album. They played Misery so Business. Cool. They played Decode. They played. Um, I'm Rose glad Colored they brought Boy. Misery Business back, by the way. 
I'm they glad did, they brought it back. They yeah. had to. They yeah. just that's like panic, not singing I write sins and not tragedies. Well she definitely got tired of, but it's like, dude, you made a good song. Don't know what to tell you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, that kinda reminds me we saw uh My Chemical Romance in what was it, September? Yeah. Back in September and this whole that whole tour they were just playing like literally everything, like deep cuts to demos. Of course they're playing like the big songs too, but like even the night we went, it was like the perfect set list because it was like a bunch of their popular songs, but then like deep cuts. And that they're my favorite band of all time. So I was like, oh my God, like every single song. You, know? <laughs> you, you were sitting on those tickets for like two years, weren't you? Like, Three we, years? We bought them. 2019. The end of 2019. Mm-hmm. We saw them. 2022. In the fall 2022. So, but I think that made it more special. I mean, the anticipation I'm, was crazy. I'm not saying like, oh, it's a good thing COVID happened because it's not. But, <laughs> but it, it was. In light of that, it was great how yeah. how special that concert felt for waiting that yeah. long for it. Yeah, yeah. I think it might have caused like major anxiety for me. Like, are they just gonna cancel it? I, like, w- I was like, so dude, I, I was like, dude, we're not gonna see them. <laughs> right. There's no way. <laughs> you just lost hope. <laughs> yeah, and then it happened. Well, my friend went to that because she was also sitting on the tickets for like three years, and yeah. she was like, I have friends that like had to fly down and get a hotel because they don't even live they here moved. anymore. <laughs> they moved. We had friends who <laughs> like crazy. they bought tickets with their significant other three years before, mm. and then they had to like figure out what they were gonna do because they were like, I'm not sitting next to my ex. Yeah. Who at this point they like been broken up. Right. For like, like, well, we bought the tickets together. Yeah. I hope it brought some couples back together. Um. Not ours. <laughs> not, not, not the ones we knew. <laughs> oh, no. It's for the better. <laughs> no, it was my my uh, my friend and my brother going. And so they're exes, but they're friends. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, he doesn't look happy to go. Like, can I go? But we just dropped them off. And then afterwards, I was like, you still look miserable. Like, yeah. You say your friend dated your brother? Well, she's my friend because she dated my brother. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. I thought it was a before thing. No, 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 no. That's got to um, be awkward. Nah, even if it wasn't. They're still friends. They're, like, good friends or whatever. Like, the things were civil. That would be pretty impressive on your part to have a friend who then started dating your brother and then broke up with your brother, who you remained friends with the whole way. <laughs> I don't know what that says about you as a sister, but as a friend, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. I'm just saying if that they were both falling off a cliff, um, not finishing that. <laughs> anyways. Oh, they're going to finish that. I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't decide. Love you both. Um, anyways. Good answer. <laughs> Safe answer. <laughs> so anyways, going back to you guys' mm. musical beginnings, I love your music tastes. Um, I think we're both very similar. We're like similar ages too, so we like went through the same things growing up, which I love because nostalgia. Um, but like when you guys started actually playing instruments, like what was that like? And you can go individually because it's probably different for both of you. Do you want to start with yours? Or? Well, for me, it was awful because I, I suck. <laughs> I'm not a good musician. Uh, I started off on drums just because we needed a drummer. Okay. No idea how to play drums. At first, I didn't even own a drum set. Yeah. Like, I was going to his house to play his, and at home, I was. Li- it was the stereotypical, like, pots and buckets and stuff like that, mm-hmm. just placed, like, where I would be hitting if I had a real drum set. And this is typically what, like, a toddler does, you know, when they're <laughs> starting out. And I'm 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's not that far removed from yeah, no. a toddler. Uh, yeah, and from there, I found bass, fell in love with it. I was the bass player for a long time until, like I said earlier, uh, we met Tony, who's in the band now. I showed him all the bass parts, and he became a better bassist than I ever was. <laughs> I, I say all the time, I'm like, as the guy who was the bassist for this band, you were the best bass- bassist this band has ever had. Aw. And uh, Very so sweet. Sweet. Yeah. now I'm like, I'm like a stage cheerleader who happens to hold a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he likes to do himself. Stage presence-wise. Are you kind of like Jamie from Pierce the Veil? It's like you're just carrying the whole thing, like throwing the bass or the guitar and doing the backflips. Oh, man. A- equivalent. He doesn't actually like throw the instrument, but like we just played Revolution live on Thursday night. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, And, um, you know, I have to stay in place and play guitar and I have to focus on all that at the same time. And Tony is newer to his instrument, so he's not super comfortable with all the spins and the jumps yet. He, you know, he does what he can. And I don't know how long Gavin's been playing drums. Gavin has long hair, so he relies on that for his stage presence, just like whipping around. Also, Koa, the drummer's like in the back, so yeah, it's kind of yeah. like... Yeah, he'll, he'll be fine, yeah. you know? Koa, um, at this show, as an example, like, he always uses a wireless input for his guitar, so mm-hmm. he's just left and right everywhere in the stage. Any bar shows we play, he'll do a lap around the bar through people and that kind of thing. But at this show at Revolution, I mean, he jumped up on the, like, hand railing, like, just freehand while playing guitar, jumped up on the... I wish I had, we have a video, but yeah, it's, you're going to, I want to see the video. After. Yeah, I can send it to you. <laughs> um, so the, yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, we really pride ourselves on our stage presence cause you know, 
I don't think I write like the best guitar riffs ever, and I don't think I write like the most intricate lyrics of all time. But like we have a good time on stage, and we make that very apparent. I have to disagree. I think you write super catchy guitar riffs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what he writes in all his greeting cards. Like it's Christmas, and it's like you write really good guitar riffs, and that's your <laughs> Christmas present. And then Tony gets the you're the best you're, you're bass the player. Yeah. I was very generous with his compliments. My drum, Thank for you. For my drummer, I'm like I didn't want you in the band at first. But <laughs> yeah. then now, I did. but now I love you. <laughs> yeah, no. No, you, I think you write great guitar parts. Every riff you write is catchy. Thank you. Um, I remember them at least. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all you need. Bare minimum. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the subject of just like how we started, I was a um, Blink-182 is my favorite of all time growing up. Okay. I, I think I just saw like they did a VMA performance where they played all the small things and it was just like their, you know, late 90s, early 2000s style, the painted nails, the dyed hair, the spiked hair. I think Travis had a mohawk at that one, which he always usually does. Um, and I just never seen that style before. I was like 10 mm. and it was like, as soon as I saw that performance, I was like, I want to play guitar. And so fifth grade, I think Christmas of fifth grade, I asked my mom for a guitar and that's how it started. Um, and yeah, I never like taught myself like music theory or anything. I just taught myself like Blink-182 songs, then Fall Out Boy songs, sometimes my chem songs. By ear? Or were you like, uh, I did like no. tabs. Yeah. Okay. So I just like looked up like the numbers on the string and mm -hmm. just did that. And now I've just gotten used to how it kind of sounds in my head. Like I've, I've gotten better at playing my ear. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just how we started. And like you said, like, I just wanted him to play drums cause I just wanted to play shows already. I was getting impatient. So I was like, I'm not going to look for a drummer. I know this guy. I just play drums. Um, in another interview, people were like, you know, it's hard to find a drummer cause none of them have drums. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So, you know, just grab I mean, your friend. How why many not? drummers have we been through in this band alone? Officially. Like hundred. Yeah. I mean, officially. <laughs> Officially, this is our third drummer. Yeah, but okay. like, we've worked with a lot of people, a lot, a lot of great people. Uh, all great. Yeah. It's, you're free to talk shit here. They don't all have to be great. No, they oh, are. No, they I genuinely are. They are. They are genuinely. <laughs> There's other people who I have. You're a little instigator, aren't you? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it makes for good content. She's, she's like, you can spill tea if you want to. We're like, you can. It's a safe spot. I mean. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I have nothing. No, all of our drummers have been fine. Do you, yeah. do you yeah. want to say any, anything bad about him? You know, No, I love him. He's no. holding you hostage? No. Yeah. He's it would break my heart if this is where you start airing like your grievances with me. You know what? He actually... No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> actually, sucks. three years ago, he didn't do... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Actually, now that you say it, I just pull out a notepad with everything I've ever written. Um, no, our drummers have always been fine, and we've never had another bassist outside of, like, you and Tony, so um, there's no shit to talk there. Yeah, that's as far as we should go. Yeah. 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 No drama. No. Oh, okay. None that we're going to talk about. Right. Legally. <sighs> Legally. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, what's you guys' favorite part about performing? So you're very high energy and everything, but, you know, what's what's your reward out of that? I think I'm, I, I, like, totally transparent. I think I'm just kind of an attention whore. So just, like, getting clapped for it makes, I'm like, yay. <laughs> like, sweet. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the, on that's the totally honest answer is just, like, yeah, probably some kind of, you know, praise thing for me but i do i just i think i just also feel the most comfortable during it like uh as uncomfortable as i am with like anxiety beforehand i just i don't care about like anything else in life like that much as performing and playing music like i don't have like any anything career-wise is literally just making money to fund the band album or like merch or gear or whatever so like i have no other real passions that i like as much as i love performing music. just as a kid you always knew that's what you wanted to do yeah i think i just it, i just never like leaned toward anything else i played sports a little as a kid and i just was like it's fun right and like i have hobbies and like i like doing other things but um and there are days where performing is like dreadful mentally where i'm like i'm so tired and i'm like i'm gonna suck but we always end up doing okay and i always just end up feeling like yeah i'm meant to do this like i just i love it yeah so Playing live is like my favorite part of being in a band yeah i mean it's like it's just the thing that makes sense, you know? And then I was saying this to the guys the other night where we played this pretty big show for us and it just, going up there just felt right, you know what I mean? Like, no matter how many people we're playing in front of or what venue we're playing, it's just, this is the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. It feels right. And you hear all the time people say like, oh, music is therapy, art is therapy. So forgive me, because I'm gonna say that as well. It's therapy, you know, I mean, I've been told that, like, in my normal life, I'm, like, relatively laid back. You know, mm -hmm. I have my moments, but on stage, is, that's the place where it's, like, if I had a bad week, I had a bad day. It's, like, okay, this is where I get to yell about it. This is where I get to jump around and exercise a little bit, you know. Sweat it out, yeah. It's it's just it's just the most fun thing on the planet to me. It <coughs> helps performing. that I'm doing it with people who I like. That's the other thing I mean, is, yeah, I get to share a stage with people I consider family, so it's, like... 
Right. There's no, there's like almost no downside. <laughs> like yeah. really, truly. And it's except. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, the anxiety before is is definitely like I right. get very. We're very funny too. How we operate. Mm-hmm. Um, he almost could not care less about shows beforehand. Like he's like he's so nonchalant. Like he or if he does, he doesn't wear it very like easily. Before a show, I am like shaking. I'm like like I have to get close to the ground and like breathe. I gotta like treat myself right. as soon as the set's done i'm done with everything i don't want to talk i'm good i did it it's fine if we sucked it does not matter afterwards he's checking vic- like videos and pictures and like did we do good did i look cool did we look cool did this sound good so we're very like opposite anxiety going in and out of a show which is very funny that how close we are we're so opposite on that i don't know if you ever noticed that but yeah no i feel like just in general you and i have always been like yin and yang where we balance each other out in this way mm-hmm. Espe- just uh, the way we work on stage the way we work behind the scenes like social media is one thing where like i make a lot of our content and i run the page i make it look the way it looks blah 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 but i like the fact that we get engagement but i can't look at it good or bad i get anxiety looking at comments hmm. i didn't use the internet like that growing up you know what i mean right and i was but completely i was completely indoctrinated to like all of it facebook twitter my not myspace so much was a little did you play runescape I feel like no, I like, actually wow. didn't. I didn't, but I I could have easily if I had a computer at the time. I would have been all over it. Right. Um. So yeah, to me, like all of the like comments and all the like DMs, like I can handle easily, and he gets yeah. really anxious from it. But oh. he handles our social media, which is funny. Like he makes all the posts. So. Right. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. It always like, like impresses me when somebody who mentions like, and you could say so forward that you have anxiety, but you like go up on a stage and you do your thing, and that's mm. something to be very proud of. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't I don't treat it either. Like I don't take anything for it. So it's just kind of like if I'm anxious, like here we go. <laughs> like I hope I hope I don't throw up. It's just the thing that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it works despite the fact that you might be anxious going up on stage. Yeah. You know. And I think that makes you work a little harder to a certain degree, and you it shows that you take it seriously. Yeah. Like. The way that you guys say, like, oh, I don't imagine myself doing anything else. Like, this is what I imagined myself doing as a kid. Like, I never changed career paths or anything. Like, as I was growing up, like, oh, I'm a journalist. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. And meanwhile, everybody's, like, jumping from one career to another. And I was like, just pick one. (laughs) I do want to say that you're you're one of the most, like, pleasant people who's ever interviewed us. Just your energy. You're very, like, bright as a person. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's nice to drive as long as we didn't come and not have someone that's, like, you know, nice to be around. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, a homeless guy at a gas station actually told me the same thing, too. Oh. It was great. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, he, like, he, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. I wasn't interviewing him, but he was he's yeah. like the resident homeless guy at that gas station. Like, he's always there. <laughs> so I stopped by to get something to drink because I was going into my workout class. And he's talking to some other lady that's already checking out. And she was like... And I stood there and I looked at him and I just smiled. And he's like, you're just a piece of sunshine and i was like thank you and then he continued his conversation i was like what was that he was like no 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 no, sweetheart what we're talking about is not for girls like you oh you you don't you don't need to know (laughs) and i'm like okay i wonder if that's a good thing it's talking some raunchy shit i guess i look too you know pg-13 for that maybe he thought (laughs) you were young yeah and then um that's still sweet of him it was and then he was like i'm writing a book i'll give you a copy when i'm done and i'm like i hope he gets published i hope so too (laughs) genuinely just a sweet homeless man like Resident at a gas station. That's cool. Yeah. yeah it's nice that How he long? showed you kindness. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you have to show kindness back. That's something that I always live on. Unless somebody's actively messing with me, I'm not going to stop being pleasant. It's yeah. better when we're nice to each other. Right. How, how long have you been doing this? Oh, the interview changed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be asking the questions from here. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, so I, I did study journalism. Okay. And I've been doing interviews since about 2019. Uh, mm-hmm. But I worked in the Spanish media world. Mm-hmm. Ah. This is like my introduction, like on the 20 something e- episode. Um, hey, you're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is basically what I do. I've interviewed a lot of Latin artists. I don't know if you guys listen to Spanish music at all. I love dancing to Spanish music. I, I'll take that. It's very sad. I should because I'm Colombian, but I don't speak any Spanish because my family let me down. So, <laughs> here we are. Shout out to mom for not letting me forget Spanish. Bien, um. bien, muy bien, because I wish I knew how to say nice job in Spanish, and I don't. I'm sitting here in the middle like, I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, so that's what I did. Um, you know, bands like Cam- Camila, I don't know if you guys heard of Camila. I think so. They're a Spanish, a Mexican rock band. That was okay. my first interview ever. They're good? They're very good. They're very, like, they're <laughs> old like school. They're terrible. <laughs> no, no, they're, it's, it was funny, because when I got the news that I was going to be able to do that, I was, like, flipping out, because I've been listening to them since I was a kid. Oh wow! Yeah, so it was one of those like revelation moments, and, wow. they're, and they were oh, so very they're not, chill. Are they are they local? 
No, 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 no. Oh, wow. Oh, I so worked, so I someone worked you with, grew like, up actual, listening to. Oh, yes, shit. Yes, yes, Congrats. Yes. That was your first? Yes. That's awesome. I was so nervous. Have you ever <laughs> interviewed, like, a band or an artist who you knew prior that let you down in the interview? Oh, yeah, Meet Your Heroes where it was bad kind of thing? No, so this wasn't in an interview setting, and I don't know if it's ever happened. I'm going to ask the same question sure. to you guys because I actually like that question. Okay. But um, there's a very, very big international reggaeton artist. So um, I'm a makeup artist, and I worked at a makeup store for a little bit. And my nice. friend got the opportunity to do male grooming for him. I'm not going to name any names, even though people who know me know. But, um, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. But this guy... Like, I was excited to meet him. And the only thing I wanted out of this entire day was just a picture. Like, sure. even if it was just a selfie, just be like, yo, he was so fucking rude. Mm. He got yeah. in a fight with the photographer. He was, um, he wouldn't speak to us. Like, he'd only speak to us through his manager. Oh, wow. And he's very, very Hispanic. Only speaks Spanish. He just only wanted to speak English. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, like, the, what little bit he communicated, well, he wanted to do it in spite English. Of the people around him, like he I didn't have want to no interact? idea. That's wild. I'm sorry to hear that. That's unfortunate. That's very yeah. sad. I'm it sorry. was very sad, and it was just one of those things where it's like, even when he puts out music now, I'm like, it has to be really catchy for me to be like, oh yeah, like that's. I mean, song. that'll ruin it for sure. Yeah, because yeah. uh, as a person, it's like. Ugh. I don't think I've had any meet and greet experience that was bad. I, I haven't met too many famous people or the people I looked up to. There's one story that you told me once that was really funny, and again, I don't, I don't want to name names because. I just want to play music and do this thing and have fun. I don't want to get into drama. But there was one guy who was at one of the shows we played, and he's this artist who's oh. like a little more well known, mm -hmm. and he's like you know on the label, everything like that. And he just happened to be at our show, right? I think for a different band he was playing. And this is this is your story. I don't know why it's out. Yeah, it. yeah. So I'm trying. I'm like trying. I to love telling other people's stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. No, he was just sitting in the back. I think genuinely like doing cocaine in the corner of this nice bar that he didn't he shouldn't have been doing that. Um, surrounded by just girls and stuff. And I, like, just from his aura, I'm like, that's definitely him. Like, I've seen him in his music videos. And uh, I just was looking at him, I've just, out of because he's got, like, he's a very interesting looking dude. And I, want, like, went to the bathroom and back a couple times, and I would look at him when I would walk. And, like, the third or fourth time I did that, I was like, I should just say, hey, like, hey, I recognize you, like, nice to see you. Mm -hmm. And I, as I got, like, closer that time, he said, he's just like, yeah, it is me. Like, he said his name to me. And I was like, I, like, looked around, like, is he talk was that to me? We weren't even having a conversation. And he said, like, yeah, like it's, you know, it's me. And I went, like, oh, cool. Nice nice to meet you, man. And he went, yeah. And, like, that's all I really remember happening. And I just was, like, this is so weird. And I just walked away. But he was at our show. And he didn't, like, say anything about our set. He didn't say anything about the other bands. He just was high and just was, like, yeah, it's me. And I was, like, congrats. My <laughs> bitch instinct would have kicked in. I would have been, like, who? Yeah. <laughs> like, I want I, I just, I, if he needs that for his ego and his world, like, go off. Like, right. do your thing. You know what I mean? Uh, that's such a... A goofy way to interact with other human beings, like it, it's cool if you like you if you have a level of confidence or you recognize like the accomplish accomplishments that you have made. But like, who gives a shit? <laughs> like, right. Nobody asked. Like, That's what I was gonna say about your story. Is like I don't understand this like. I'm famous or I'm rich or I make good music so I get to be better than you. It doesn't make any sense to me, and I don't see how I would ever get like that. Because like the other day, I had a friend like say something about a show that pays well. And she's like, yeah, this other band didn't want it because it didn't pay like 500. I was like, we've never been paid 500. We just play because we like to play. Right. And she's like, oh, you need it. Like, don't you want money? I'm like, yeah, that'd be nice. But like, I do it because I like performing and I do, you know, like. Maybe that's our problem. Ma maybe that's why. We're maybe we'd be so much better if we were like 500 bucks. 500 bucks. We don't show. We're not going to be there. Yeah. But and also like, was it you telling me the story of an, another local band that like the dude offered a picture to the person for him? No, that was Gavin. Our drummer Gavin, okay. told this story of a <laughs> another local band he, he like ran into one of the other local bands at a show it was like a green day concert and this was before our drummer gavin was in young fiction okay so he sees the local band and recognizes them and i think he was like hey aren't you so-and-so they were like yeah man my drummer was just like okay cool like he just recognized them and w was wanting like to clarify yeah and they were kind of like so you want like a picture man <laughs> and my drummer was like no. <laughs> He's such like a straight our, our drummer Gavin is so forward <laughs> like not about any BS or anything like that. So he I can see it perfectly. He's yeah, just, just like No. No. <laughs> just walking away. I had a similar situation to that. So oh. where I work, it's it's a TV channel and we have like a very uh popular uh journalist and obviously you know, you look up to him like he's a good journalist. Yeah. He's iconic. He will be remembered long after he's done working. And my friend was so, like, 
so since I started off in an internship, like they would always give us like little tours and stuff. So I had already like kind of met them and whatever. And, mm-hmm. You know, I don't fangirl over things like that either. But my friend was super excited to meet them. And she didn't do the internship. So she was like, oh, I'm going to meet him for the first time, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So she's standing there staring. And he w- she was like, can I get a picture with you? And yeah, so I go over and I take a picture. I take their picture. And he's like, do you want one too? And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just like. Like, didn't know where to stand. Like That's what I was saying in the car when he told that story. It's like, I don't care where this band goes. I'm never t- asking someone if they want to pay. Like, unless I can tell that they're struggling to ask it verbally, where they're, like, stuttering over the question, can I get a picture? Yeah. It's way too embarrassing a risk to be like, do you want a picture? No. <laughs> like, I'm just going to go cry. Like, there's no there's no recovering <laughs> from that. So I'm never offering that as a question. If someone asks, I'm absolutely about it, but I won't offer it for them. Because that story our drummer told me is, like, so embarrassing to me. Yeah. To like offer it, be like, oh, and they're just no. It's that no, the second hand okay. embarrassment is there. Yeah, like, I'm just, embarrassed for the dude. Yeah, it's just it's cringe. <laughs> I can't do it. Something there, like I don't know if it's confidence. The fact that they were like, do you want the picture? It's something I could never do, but maybe that's because I just assume nobody cares, dude. Right. My assumption, and may, maybe I need to be nicer to myself. My <laughs> assumption is always like, they don't care. Nobody cares about it, man. Like just who? Go yeah. on with your day. Leave them be. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it's kind of less disruptive <laughs> to just kind of, yeah, they're fine, and just walk, go on with your day. I don't know. There we see the balancing out. You're sitting here like, oh, they don't care, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to go along my day. Yeah. Like, you guys really are, like, opposites, but it works. Yeah. Um, I was, like, the healthiest relationship I've had my whole life, just, like, as a friend. Like, we've always just been, like, I, we've rarely ever argued, fought, been mean to each other about anything. It's been very easy. We disagree, but, like, so like calmly when we disagree it's like okay i didn't see it that way yeah no and i I could tell (laughs) by you guys' personalities like you're both very like chill and like hey we're just going to be decent human beings and that's pretty much it we try some people would argue with that yeah Yeah. we've we've made enemies by just being ourselves i don't (laughs) don't know what happened they just did not vibe with it that's Uh, fine we're probably the problem yeah as my as my mom would say la envidia (laughs) uh jealousy Ah. Just, just, just Toxicity, jealousy. Okay. Kind you of said like, it, not me, sister. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, we like to, um, people ask for unsolicited advice on the internet, on oh, Reddit. Cool. So, I go on the relationship ad- advice oh, Reddit. Boy. And you guys two single guys for relationship advice? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're going to see it in a way that they don't. Okay. okay. Um, That's interesting. Good perspective. Yeah. So, I, 23 male, found out about my girlfriend, 22 females, passed, and it has mentally fucked me over. Okay. I broke my phone and luckily my girlfriend had a spare phone that she could lend me for the time being while my phone was getting fixed. For context, this was her old phone and she still had her accounts logged into it. A few days passed by, the contents of her phone piqued my curiosity. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to find shit you don't want to see, don't look don't for look. it. <laughs> don't look. The temptation's there. Maybe he shouldn't have looked at it, but like I get it. I would have looked. I get it, yeah. I would have looked that I'd be writing the same post. I can't even talk. Yeah. Um, anyways, my girlfriend and I have been in a relationship for in a relationship for more than a year now and I have told her everything about my life and thought she told me everything about her life as well. The pictures in her phone and chats told me otherwise. She had sent nudes to her ex where they would send nudes to each other back and forth. When we did the first deed, she told me it was her first time. But when I'm reading the chats, I could tell it wasn't. Mm. Um, I confronted her about the pictures and chats I found about, I found out about and she told me that she didn't tell me because I would leave her if I found out and that she regrets doing it. At the start of the relationship, we had established that communication and trust is key, which hurts me more as I was being truthful with her while she lied and kept secrets from me. Mm -hmm. Was she right for lying and not telling me? This is my first relationship, and I don't know what to do. Oh, that's the worst part of it all. I feel like... Stop laughing at the dude, Dan. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. Can Can you run back one thing for me? Did he say that... When they were together, she was sending nudes to her ex-boyfriend? No, no, no. So it's an old phone. Okay. And he just found it, and okay. then she had told him, like, It just bothers him hey, that she, he had sent, s- she had sent naked pictures and not, not really... Not even that. What bothers him is the lie. The okay. lie? Yeah, she should have been forward with him, mm-hmm. I think. But he, she had a life all the way up before they got together, where she... Did her own thing. She was in a previous relationship. I'm not saying that sending the nudes was a mistake, but she's made her own mistakes in life. Mm-hmm. She is a fully developed person. So you can't be mad at that. But I understand being unhappy with the lie. Right. She should have been forward with it. 
And at that point, if he was like, oh, I don't like that she sent nudes, well, it's like, okay, that's your problem. That's not hers. That, that's, what, that's what I was asking. Like, did she tell him that she had never sent nude pictures? Because that's a weird thing to even be mad about on his end. She's, she said she had never done the deed. Okay. And she, he could tell from the messages that he, she had. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's what bothered him, the lie. Not he's not upset about the nudes. Okay. Then yeah, I mean if she if she outright said like I've I'm I'm a virgin, I've never had sex before, um, that is a weird lie to start the relationship on and like him finding out is like it's what's gonna happen. I mean, again, like you said, like if you don't want to know the answer, don't go digging. But but he found the truth, so it's yeah, it's a weird situation. But I would say that honesty and communication is the most important thing and yeah. now she's caught up in a worse situation than like she's like oh you're gonna leave me if i tell you it's like well, i'm gonna leave you because you lied <laughs> so and there's a way to go about telling the truth too like yeah you can be honest like yeah i have had experiences before or i've sent news to an ex-boyfriend you don't need to go full descript on like what position you were in yeah, I was about to say, you don't need to go into camera, detail you, know? you, you don't need to go into details about these things like but, it's not like I don't know. So I was gonna say I've had that before, <laughs> on like a first date. Got told like way too much detail. <laughs> it's like, all right, well. Was there a second date? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's again, it's not like it's not a like. Oh, she's had sex before. That's crazy. I can't even date her. It's just like telling me that is like, all right. Then th- there's just I don't know. There's there's no, just no, something it's there. I agree. Was, yes, I, there was something that was a mental block. It was like, all right. There's something that's like she probably thought Dobby Vanity was hot. <laughs> maybe maybe that was her issue just to circle it back no you know what? i am I'm, I'm old tell like the full part of it really quick i mean we're on a first date at a you know at a restaurant and she's telling me about how she was with two dudes at the same time before and i was like <laughs> we met an hour ago <laughs> that's not a problem but like <laughs> unfolding that like that off-rip. that right i don't like do you do i don't i don't Good care what you. you've done before i don't care like i don't want to know <laughs> like i don't that's that's all you that was your life when you said that's not a problem, I thought you were referring to the dates. So I was like, wait, what? <laughs> that's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's uh, Past experience is like, it doesn't bother me. We just don't have to go in depth about it. Like, right. like Koa said, I assume you had a life before me. We're 20, I'm 24. So if I date someone my age, you have two decades of your life. That's you. Right. That's fine. There's some but stuff. But we're at Chili's. Too. I don't need to hear about the two guys in college <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> There's some stuff like I don't need to know. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, and that's. There, there, maybe if we're having conversation and it like finds its way to, you know. If you ever been with two dudes, <laughs> like, you know, like if I ask yeah. that question, answer it honestly. Sure. But <laughs> that's an oddly specific ahead. question that I hope you're asking on all your first dates. Now. I have to now. <laughs> this girls open the floodgates. So on Dylan, me. let me ask you a question. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Um, but yeah, no. To this, th- th- I understand why this guy's upset. Is he asking whether or not he should break up with her? Is that the end goal of this Reddit thread? Um, or what should I do? They just said I don't know what to do. Um, it doesn't have to break up with her. It depends on how much it bothers him. It really is his choice. If he can be like, all right, now cards on the table. Like, is there anything else you're lying about? Because it's the only way we can get through this. Is if now at this fork in the road, you have to tell me the truth about anything I ask you. Right. If it's or, early on enough. Well, they said it's been about a year. but nah. That's still like fair enough. Yeah. It's so, too long, so, but I feel like it depends on how their relationship is. It's like, yeah, how serious is she lying about more stuff? Right. And if, they, she, and if she's not, yeah. then it's like, this isn't that bad if she's not. So I, like, right off the bat, my reaction was that, like, why would you lie about something like that? But then, you know, I have, like, a third eye because I look in the comments. I just read you guys the post. But some people were like, no, there's some guys that are just genuinely dirtbags and will break up with you. But then that's, like, the, well, if you really want to be too. with someone like that. What is, I say, yeah, it's better for her. If problem for he, him, like, why did she lie? Did she lie just because she didn't want to have the conversation? She seemed or to say she's she, lying she, because he know she knows that he is going to make it an issue. I'm that's, not saying it's right that she lied, but what's his maturity level? What what are his insecurities? Right. We have an unreliable narrator situation we, here. We do. Yeah. That isn't, yeah. and that happened to me with a whole book. Like we need book. to get her involved. <laughs> yeah. Get her on the phone. <laughs> Find this lady. Um, Anyways, I love how, how much we care about this. I really do. That all, all the thought that we've put into I'm this. I'm that I'm here for this. I is really he updated? Th- I want to know if they're together. There's, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's no update yet. I don't think it was that. Uh, Please update me if you find out. So I'll <laughs> send you the I'm link if I if I we'll have to come back. Yeah. Right. We'll come yeah, to the I pod think. again and be like, all right, let's find out about our boy. <laughs> we'll, we'll do an Instagram live and just like talk about it. Up. There yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is your shameless plug moment, guys. If you guys want to mention anything, um, you love you love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I was gonna say you love this. This is your job. I guess no, I'll do yeah. it. <laughs> plug it. <laughs> uh, well, we're on. I don't know where I'm looking. I'm gonna go back and forth. Oh, we're on one. Instagram. <laughs> 
Instagram at Young Fiction, TikTok at Young Fiction. We're on Facebook. It's Young Fiction. We're on Apple Music and Spotify. Guess what Guess that one what is? You can do. Yeah. Search up Young Fiction. Uh, our newest song is called "Kill the King." Came out. We always forget. April. Just call it April. It was like March thirty first. Just March say April. March thirty first. <laughs> and uh, I usually get in trouble when I talk more than that. Do you have anything? You want to talk about? <laughs> Who gets you in trouble? You're, you're I yell. Like, oh, I yell. You, you can't tell them all of our secrets. Uh, no, I mean, what, what other secrets could we possibly share right now? That we're working on new music, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I didn't want to be the one to say. It. What's I the new know. music? I'm nosy. Oh, I mean, there's no like there's that. no official names or anything that or dates, but it's coming. <laughs> we'll, we'll be dropping new music this year, so just keep your eye on our Instagram um, and our TikTok, where uh, Koa posts all the lovely, funny skits. All the stupid stuff. <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, just follow our Instagram, follow our Spotify, and um, I'm trying to think what else to plug. Yeah, our song Killer King. That's really all I got. I was trying to look for a screenshot because uh, my boyfriend was asking me who I had, and I was like, oh, it's a band called Young Fiction. And he sent that meme that's like, <gasps> and it's like Young Fiction when they see old facts. <laughs> oh, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. That joke never gets old. <laughs> oh, I thought it was so innovative. Like, oh, we've, oh, we've, we, get, we get old fiction all the time. Just old like, fact, old fiction. Somebody yeah. asked me once, they were like, what are you guys going to call yourselves in 50 years? Because we're like... Retired. I'm going to say young at heart fiction. <laughs> if I'm alive, like <laughs> 75 years old. Uh, uh, at 75, I will not be doing this shit. Thank you very much. If I can much. play guitar at 75, I will. I will, if I can. Yeah. That's like a tough... I don't see me aging gracefully to 75. <laughs> but It'll probably look different. I probably won't be able to jump around as much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That was it. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us, Catch by the way. Catch you next time at the next episode of the Senior Citizen Podcast. <laughs>